Hey Pyro, we're going to burn this delightful jellyfish coaster. To get started, let's gather our supplies and materials. First, you're going to need to secure your wood burning stand. I like to use just a piece of tape and tape it on down to my table so it doesn't go anywhere. And then you need your wood burning tool and your brass nibs. For this tutorial, we are going to use this nib. This is the mini flow nib and it does thinner lines than the other flow point and it's one of my favorites for line art. All you do is take this nib and screw it into the wood burning tool hand tight. You don't really want it any tighter than that but you definitely don't want it coming loose while you're burning. And then it is time to get on to our materials. The first thing you want is your coaster. Then you will want some sandpaper. The next thing is tape. I recommend painter's tape or artist tape. Then some transfer paper, either carbon or graphite. And then an embossing tool or a pencil, some way to transfer the pattern. I like the embossing tool, so that's what we're gonna use here. Then you will need a sand eraser to get rid of any part of the design that you don't want to stay on your wood. And of course you need your design. In this case, our jellyfish. The first thing you need to do is prep the wood. Sand it in the direction of the wood grain, and that knocks off any extra splinters or raised wood, and then wipe off the sanding dust. Then it's time to transfer your design. Cut the design down to size, and then tape it in place. I like to tape just across the top so that I can lift it up and check my progress while I am transferring my design. So I will tape across the top right here. Now it's time to snag the graphite or carbon paper, whatever transfer paper you decided to use. Put the shiny side down and place it in between your pattern and the wood. The next thing you're going to do is trace over the design, every little piece. You don't have to trace hard, in fact that makes it really hard to erase later in case you either don't burn over the top and you need to erase it, or you make a mistake and you need to erase it. So make sure that you are pressing lightly. If you ever want to see your progress or see where you left off, you can always lift up your pattern and your carbon paper or graphite paper, whatever transfer paper that you're using. And then you just look at the wood and see what part of the pattern was already transferred and what is left. When you are finished tracing the pattern, it's a good idea to just look it over real quick and make sure that all the parts were transferred before you move on to the next step. When you're satisfied with it, remove the transfer paper and the pattern and then turn on your burner. Go ahead and plug it in and then set it down on your stand for just a few minutes and let it heat up. Once the burner is hot, it is time to burn the pattern. Simply trace over the lines that you just transferred with your wood burning tool. Make sure to keep your burner in motion so that it doesn't leave any splotches. So when you are coming in at the beginning, make sure it is already moving the direction you want it to go, and then do not leave it on the wood when you are done with the line. Immediately pull it off and that will help to keep it from getting any blobs. Also, Try to pull your wood burning tool or swing it side to side instead of pushing it forward. 
you can push it forward, but a lot of times, especially beginners, you find that it digs into the wood, it'll catch on a piece of wood grain, and then it'll make a giant hole or a giant blob in the wood. And so it's better to just pull it towards you or swing it to the side. Also, never press on a wood burning tool while it is hot, especially with a nib like this. This is a very thin nib and it can bend easily if you are pressing. So you do not want to do that. Pressing just breaks the burner or makes your wrist stressed out, things like that. Don't do that. You cannot muscle a burn. So just allow the heat to do the work. Another couple of quick tips are to use short strokes instead of long strokes. It's a lot easier to control that way. And turn the wood instead of turning your hand. That way you don't have to fight the cord that is plugged into the wall and twisting with that extra weight. Instead, you just turn the wood. It's a lot easier on your hand. The last thing I would say is to enjoy the process. Just remember to relax. Pyrography is a little slower than painting or drawing or any of those other art mediums. So just sit back and enjoy the burn.
When you have finished tracing over your pattern with your wood burning tool, make sure that you do a quick look over and see if there are any spots that you missed or spots where you feel like you're not super satisfied with the burn. Go ahead and touch those up with your wood burning tool now and then check for any parts of the pattern that you didn't burn over and erase those leftover pattern marks with your sand eraser. When you're done, it's time to seal it. And you can use a whole number of things. You can use Danish oil or resin or epoxy or polyurethane. I like to use a clear spray paint or a clear polycrylic spray and then add a couple layers of brush on polycrylic to give it a really nice finish. Then it's time to admire your piece. If you enjoy wood burning, you would also love BurnSavvyAcademy.com where we have more projects for you to burn, more workshops and courses that teach beginners and advanced wood burning artists professional pyrography techniques. Also check out the other coaster tutorials so you can make this entire seaside set. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial. Later Pyro!